I don't see that by having an extra voice for a certain part of Australia that we have got a true democracy. And democracy has been the thing that we've fought for and that we hold um, very highly in this, in this community. Mm. Now, by creating a special voice, we're creating a problem. And my challenge to you tonight, um, the problems that you have um, reverted to are cultural issues. And my belief is that if we have a cultural problem, we need a cultural solution. And the example I would use is with the Jewish community, they take ownership of their cultural problem and they solve it themselves. Now, why haven't we been able to solve that? Why hasn't the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people been able to solve their own problem? Why are they coming to us, and I don't want to say us, to solve that problem? Thank you for your question. I'll go to this slide here, um, just to remind us all. Um, it's not cultural problems as in an issue with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander culture. We have a, a wonderful culture uh, and way of life that was developed for you know many thousands of years. Uh, we weren't the savages that was said about us for you know many years after the arrival of the British and then the beginning of our federation from 1901. Um, the White Australia policy was one of the first policies you know that this nation had. Um, we're not unintelligent, we're not different, we don't have a life expectancy of around eight years less because uh, we are different, right? Um, and the issues in our communities are the same issues that you'd see in communities that suffer from uh, poverty, you know, from poor water um, supply, uh, from, you know, all of the issues in our communities, those are what lead to these problems, okay? The, the, the traumas that are carried, and, and science shows this as well, you know, traumas are carried from generation to generation, all right? It affects our children, whether they have lived through that or not. It affects the way that they uh, think and the way they feel about things. Trauma is carried. Um, and there have been so many failed policies okay and harmful laws and i mentioned uh, i don't know if i mentioned but yes they could they could steal our children you know uh, all of these things have led to those problems in those communities so firstly i just want to say it's not a cultural problem okay this is a systemic problem and indigenous people want to take responsibility for our lives we want to take responsibility for our communities. We do take responsibility. And it is why we have called for a constitutionally enshrined voice, because we are smart enough to see that every time we have established the means to speak, to have a voice, right, to speak coherently to our issues and offer the solutions and say to the government and to the Australian people, hey, hang on, what you're doing here is wrong. Okay, this is gonna cost hundreds of millions of dollars and fail and make things worse. We want that responsibility and every time we set it up, you can't ignore that another government comes along and takes it away. And isn't it wasteful that we should, as taxpayers, spend money, you know, on setting up these representative bodies since 1967 and having them taken all the way back to square one, things get worse, they establish another one and around and around we go. And so, we are seeking a voice to take responsibility because we are sick and tired of policies that fail because it's our lives, it's our people, it's our families and it's our country, you know? And we shouldn't want our country to be the nation that has proportionately the most incarcerated people on the planet. And again, on that point, it's not a matter of our culture that our children are 100% of the children locked up in detention in the Northern Territory. My children can understand the difference from right or wrong when they have love and guidance, you know, and when our families are able to heal from those traumas. It's not that we're different. 
And I think there's a really important part of the Uluru Statement that goes to your question. You know, proportionately with the most incarcerated people on the planet, we are not an innately criminal people. We're not innately criminal. Our children are alien from their families at unprecedented rates. This cannot be because we have no love for them. So, mate, I, I really hope that you'll, you know, think deeply about this in the coming weeks that we want to take responsibility. We just know that we need to take this step. This isn't special treatment. And the Solicitor General, I hope, answers your question as well if you, if you look at what he said about this. He, he basically said that this strengthens our democracy. Because as a democracy, as an egalitarian society, we know that when people aren't being heard, then we take measures to help them be heard. And I, I want to answer this, even though it's not what you asked, but it sort of is. The reason we are voiceless, okay? Because some people say, oh, you've got, you know, indigenous politicians. Well, firstly, indigenous politicians represent their electorates and, their polit and they're loyal to their political parties, okay? They're not accountable to indigenous communities. Um, but we are only around three to four percent of the population now, where we were a hundred percent, okay? And that 3 to 4 percent Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are spread across this great continent, uh, across over 170 electorates. So when it comes to Indigenous people getting the attention of a member of parliament, you know, when, he's priori when he or she is prioritising, you know, what they push for in that place, we are, a, we are the last sort of priority, you know? They can easily harm us and there are no, there's no repercussion democratically. And so this is just important for us being heard to make improvements, okay? So I, I hope that helps. And, and finally, it doesn't drive a wedge between us. As I mentioned, the Constitution has specifically excluded us and that race power is used to make special laws about Indigenous people. This unites us. This connects us in what constitutes us as Australians with a proud and wonderful culture, you know, and a peoples that um, we celebrate today. Our, our children certainly celebrate today. Don't we celebrate, you know, beautiful Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander art and song, you know? Let's embrace that. It doesn't drive a wedge, in my opinion. Thanks.